What's up everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I'm gonna to show you how I kind of learn effects in Premiere Pro and how you can teach yourself you know, pretty much anything. And I would recommend doing this a couple times a week because if you do, then you're gonna better understand Premiere Pro and all the effects it has to offer. Now you can use this for any editing software, but this is kind of my tips and tricks on what I do to learn effects rather than just watching YouTube tutorials, which I highly recommend. Check mine out if you want to. As always, if you guys like the video, please click that like button because it seriously helps out the channel. And if you're new, consider subscribing because I'm gonna be making some more stuff in the future. As you guys know, I always give away one free version of my ultimate effects pack all you have to do is click the link in the description down below and I can randomly select you to be the winner of the giveaway out of 7,600 entries played by Hatem was the winner so let's jump right into the tutorial so in Premiere Pro there's 18 categories of video effects and each category of effects has its own collection of effects so typically what I like to do is go to Google and type in a random number picker and then what I'm going to do is set the min to 1 and the max to 18 and click generate now that landed on 5 so if I go back into Premiere I'm going to count 5 down 1 2 3 4 5 so I landed on distort so if I check this little arrow it's going to drop down a bunch of different visual effects so what I'm gonna do is count these up. One, two, three, 12. I'm gonna go back to my random number picker in Google and change the max to 12 and then click generate. It landed on one. So what I'm gonna do is go back into Premiere and drag on my corner pin effect and see what it applies in the effects control tab. So the first step is to actually understand what this effect is. So whatever effect you land on using this random number selector, I want you to go to this website and kind of search your effect. Click on the link in the description down below. This will give you every single effect in Premiere Pro. All you have to do is hit Control F and then type in what you're looking for. So I'm gonna type in corner pin. And if you look right here, it highlights corner pin effect. The corner pin effect distorts an image by changing the position of each of its four corners. Use it to stretch, shrink, skew, or twist an image to simulate perspective or movement that pivots the edge of a clip, such as a door opening. So you can learn about a lot about the effects and sometimes they give you a little image to show you what's happening here. So now that we understand what the effect is, let's go back into Premiere Pro and see what we can do to our clip. So for example, this is all about changing the perspective. If you see, we have these corners that we can kind of click and drag around. And if you just drag it around, check out how dope it is. We can play with our perspective by dragging our corners. And I highly recommend playing around with each effect because you never know what you can create. So making this back to the center, keep in mind that you can also change the zoom level. So we're gonna change it to 25% and we can see what our effect is actually doing. So this is kind of a cool effect because you can start to learn about what you want to apply this effect for. So for example, if I change this to fit and then I reset all of my effects, what happens if I drag my upper left to the left and then my upper right to the right. So I'm just basically stretching these out. Well, it's changing the perspective. So if I look at it, you can see how far I'm dragging these around. And it's kind of a way of playing around with your visual effects. Keep in mind that in Premiere, you can keyframe everything. So if I reset these parameters and go to the beginning of my clip and keyframe the upper left and lower right, scrub through a little bit and then go back to my corner pin effect and then just manipulate these around, you can kind of get an interesting perspective shift effect. So in a nutshell, that is already creating some weird distorted effects and we can kind of play around with all of the different corner pins to see what we want to do to our image. And this is all about creative freedom. So you can like literally get some really distorted effects. This process basically allows you to get a better understanding in a couple minutes of what an effect does in Premiere Pro. Now, I love creating tutorials for you guys, but I'm always trying to think of ways that you can learn on your own time. I don't have all the time in the world to make a tutorial on each individual effect. So this process kind of teaches you how to learn yourself. So let's use this same technique and basically restart. Let's go back to the beginning. We have 18 effects. So let's go to the random number picker, go to 18 and click generate. This time we landed on seven. Let's go back into Premiere. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Image control. And under image control, we have one, two, three, four, five. So let's go back to the random number picker, change it to five, max, and then click generate. We landed on three. So going back into Premiere, we have one, two, three. Color pass. I've actually never used color pass. So this is a perfect example. Let's go back to that Premiere Video Effects and Transitions website and then hit Control F or Command F on a Mac and then type in color pass. 
If I look at the color pass effect, it says that the color pass effect converts a clip to grayscale with the exception of a single specified color. Use the color effect to highlight a particular area of a clip. For example, a clip in a basketball game, you could highlight the basketball player by selecting and preserving its color while keeping the rest of the clip displayed in grayscale. Note that with the color pass effect, you can only isolate only colors and not objects within a clip. That sounds pretty cool. Let's test it out and see what happens. So I think I'm gonna drag in a different clip of my buddy who is diving out in Hawaii, and then let's see what we can do. Let's drag on the color pass effect to our clip and see what's happening. All right, so looking at the color pass effect, we have a similarity thing that I'm assuming is adjusting the intensity of the similarity of our colors, and then you have reverse, which will reverse our colors if we want to. So first things first, we're gonna reset it all, and we're gonna pick a color. So if we pick blue, what happens? So right away, it kind of looks like it gray scaled and a little bit and not much blue. Let's drag the similarity up and play with it. So it looks like if I drag this up, I can kind of make my subject grayscale. Yeah, so my subject is grayscale. And now I can see if I uncheck the toggle, it looks like my background is just blue and my subject is not in color anymore. So that's pretty cool, but let's reverse it and see what happens. So if I reverse it, it actually looks like my background becomes grayscale and now my subject is in color. This process is pretty cool because you learn different effects and you never know what it's gonna get you. I'm thinking about how easy that effect was compared to actually creating the curves within Premiere itself. It was just an actual effect and I never knew that. So moving on, I'm gonna do one more example and let's go back to the random number picker, change our max to 18 and click generate. Now this time we landed on 10. So let's count down 10, one, nine, 10. We have noise and grain. Now under noise and grain, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna go back to my random number picker and change the max to six, click generate. We landed on two. So this time we're gonna go back into Premiere and count down two. So we have median and then to legacy effect. So let's check out what it does. Go to our effects within Premiere Pro using the link in the description down below and type in median. So now we have the median effect. The median effect clip replaces each pixel with a pixel that has the median color value of neighboring pixels with the specified radius. At a low radius value, this effect is useful for reducing types of noise. At higher radius values, this effect gives an image a painterly appearance. Originals on the left with the effect applied on the right. So it kind of looks interesting, but let's go into Premiere and drag a clip in there and see what we can do to our effect. I'm gonna drag this clip of this guy skateboarding out in Santa Monica when I was down there. And let's go to the effects tab and drag on median and see what happens. So nothing happens right away. And I think we have to adjust the radius. So it like blurs it out, but it also creates like a painterly effect, which is kind of interesting, all by just creating and changing the radius. And if we go all the way up to what's our max 255, it just kind of blurs out the entire image and you don't really know what's going. I can already see that this is an artistic approach. So if I keyframe the radius from 255 and then bring it in about the center and reset it to my image, then it kind of should paint its way into this image and reveal the subject just like so. So I'm already thinking that this could be a quick little transition. If you wanted to transition clips together, then you could basically drag in another clip. And then what I'm gonna do is add the median effect onto my first clip and then basically keyframe the radius and then go to a little bit towards the end and change this to 255 and then drag that one clip out to the end. So now it should basically paint its way into the next clip. And just like that, we've created a simple transition. Now I would highly recommend speeding this process up so it's just a little bit faster and it makes the transition a little bit more seamless. So just like that, we've created like, I don't know what you wanna call it, like a paint transition, but this is another effect that I've never really used. Now, what does operate on alpha channel only mean? Well, alpha channel is kind of like the transparency values or like dark, so like anything black. So I wonder if I have a text layer and let's say text layer, I'm gonna center this under the graphics tab go to the edit tab, center this guy, and then let's see what happens if I apply this paint effect to it. So I'm gonna go back to the editing tab and drag on median and see what happens. 
So looking at it right away, it's like if I just drag the radius, it kind of creates like a white and black effect. But what happens if I select operate on alpha channel only? All that black space, it operates on now. So it basically ignores all the black space and you can kind of paint your text layer on if you wanted to. So I'm gonna keyframe this radius from here and then zoom forward a little bit. <laughs> zoom forward. What? Scroll forward. And then I'm gonna reset the value so it reveals my text layer. So if I look, I have this painterly transition and then all of a sudden, boom, I just painted that text layer on. I didn't even know that was possible. And the reason I didn't know that was possible is because like, I would never play around with median legacy effect because I didn't know what it did. And that's where I'm gonna end today's tutorial because you can learn pretty much anything within Premiere Pro if you just spend some time and create random selections of effects and learn yourself what it does. This is my pro tip because this is what I do all the time and I highly recommend it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's tutorial and if you did, please let me know down below. Hit that like button. If you're new, consider subscribing because I'm gonna be making some more stuff in the future. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.